Hello and welcome to this talk. My name's Claire Snowden Darling and I'm going to talk you through how hormones affect muscles. So who am I? So I am the head of the College of Functional Wellness. I'm the clinical director of Hormone Wellness, which is an online hormone and menopause service. I'm the chair of the Kinesiology Federation Board, uh, predominantly working on training standards and the creator of the Triangle of Hormonal Health, which you're going to learn a little bit about later. I'm the co-creator of Functional Kinesiology and Functional Wellness Coaching, the co-author of How to Improve the Menopause Experience Through Nutrition and Lifestyle, hashtag, no, colon, the Triangle of Hormonal Health. It's a long name, isn't it? Uh, which is due for release at the end of 2024. And I'm regularly featured in the national media and on global podcasts talking about all of this stuff. So let's crack on. The College of Functional Wellness. Who are we? Well, this is my glamorous business partner, Laura Knoll. So when I talk about we, I'm talking about the both of us. Uh, and so this is the wonderful woman that I have co-authored and co-created with. So the College of Functional Wellness, we are an international training academy. We provide accredited training in kinesiology, functional wellness and menopause coaching, as well as nutrition and emotional coaching. So the kinesiology that we teach is our own kinesiology, functional kinesiology, which, as mentioned, is an accredited training pathway. Uh, the new kid on the kinesiology block, as we like to call ourselves. Uh, all of this work has been developed from our research, from our clinical experience and from our own journeys of ill health. We've both had the experience of being let down by both the medical and the holistic model. And it was something that we really wanted to look at creating protocols and processes to ensure that regardless of what is sat in front of them in clinic, practitioners are armed with the best training to really know how to work with their clients. So our unique intellectual property includes the triangle of hormonal health, uh, the stages of treatment, the six pillars, which we call blood sugar, stress, hormones, digestion, immune and emotional transformation. Now, they sound like they're not connected, but what you're going to see is how very connected all of those pillars are. So we are in the middle of a global health crisis. We have got uh, a lot of chronic conditions and uh, not just for adults over the age of 65, which uh, the diagram shows, but you know, I am seeing more and more younger and younger people coming into clinic. My, uh, my passion is asking why, and when you start to scratch below the surface, you start to realize that climate change and pollution, pesticides and food chain depletion, a struggling uh, NHS and medical systems elsewhere, medication usage, which is just rife, including the pill and um, synthetic HRTs, the fact that there are chronic health conditions, including diabetes, obesity, inflammatory conditions, hormone imbalances and cancer being one in two now. Uh, the diagram shows the 10 cro common chronic conditions for adults of 65 or over and so high blood pressure high cholesterol arthritis ischemic heart disease diabetes kidney disease heart failure depression alzheimer's and copd but what's really interesting is that many of those conditions are connected to inflammation and we're going to talk about that in depth so holistic practitioners i believe are no longer a nice to have we are no longer the last resort we are now essential. I call us the frontline coaches because um, we are experiencing that some people, you know, really struggle to even get in with their GPs. Their the way that the health system works is just not looking at the whole picture of people's health. And so, we absolutely need well-trained frontline coaches to be able to support people with where they are. Now, I just want to be really clear that as holistic practitioners, we don't deal with conditions. We leave that to the doctors. 
But as you're going to see, there's a huge amount that we can be doing to support our clients. And this is why we need more and more and more holistic practitioners, because more and more and more people are unwell. So the challenges that practitioners are facing right now is that a lot of the problems that we were just talking about show up in the body when clients come to see us. And we are ill-equipped to deal with these issues. So, um, you know, if you're a masseuse, you're going to feel so much congestion in their body. They're going to be, you know, especially with obesity, poor lymph movement. Um, uh, if you do other therapies or other modalities or, you know, you're a personal trainer, again, you're going to see all of these issues playing out in the body. And traditionally, our trainings don't cover how to work with people going through this kind of issue. So one of the things that I find with holistic therapy, and it was how I was trained, uh, which is where my passion came to create a training that was different, is that we can constantly be working on the same area, the same knee problem, the same shoulder problem. And holistic approaches are either myopic, as in, you go to see the practitioner about a bad knee and they work on your knee, which is exactly the same, actually, if we're really honest, as how the medical model works. Um, or uh, then we can actually be contributing to a problem as we're going to be exploring, or we're only working in one realm. And we're going to talk more about the realms. But what I mean is, if you see a nutritionist, you're only been working on nutrition, whereas actually there could be a structural issue that's going on here. So we're missing key foundational information to be able to support our clients fully. And very often uh, with modalities, we're working in an order that doesn't support effective healing. Now, like I said, I mean, I've trained in 16 modalities, so I, I, I'm not just talking about one modality, but I'm talking about in a lot of different modalities, we would be working straight away with detoxing or working, uh, you know, going in with the structural balances when actually it's the wrong thing to do, depending on where someone is in their journey. And so it felt really important to create a pathway to help practitioners be able to navigate all of these challenges. So that's what we did. So let's talk about chronic inflammation. So chronic inflammation, um, and I'm predominantly, I suppose, talking to people who have an interest in body work here, but any kind of muscle imbalance and injury can stem from chronic inflammation. And doctors don't focus on stress and inflammation. They're more interested in the medication that will provide relief. So this is what I mean by we let the doctors deal with the condition. We can look at the, the root cause. So what causes chronic inflammation are things like leaky gut, which is uh, technically known as intestinal permeability. Sounds much posher. Um, food intolerances, major cause of chronic inflammation. Blood sugar instability, stress and high adrenaline. Unresolved infections such as SIBO, which stands for small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, uh, which is surprisingly common. Um, high estrogen or estrogen dominance injury, nutritional deficiencies, including vitamins A, D, E, and zinc, and heavy metal or toxin overload, and poor body evacua evacuation through large intestine, kidneys, and lungs. So the doctors aren't going to be focusing on any of that. So we get to focus on that whilst the people are having scans and medication and maybe even surgery, we can actually deal with what's going on underneath the symptom to support the, the, the person back to full wellness and hopefully not get any more conditions. So it's important to understand the difference between acute versus chronic inflammation. So inflammation is part, you know, um, acute inflammation is an important part of the immune process. So it's when we have something like, you know, we come in contact with chemical irritants or an infection, uh, trauma or injury, burns, laceration, cuts, wounds, a frostbite feels very specific, but frostbite, um, or there's an allergic reaction. The body's response will be to go into um, acute um, inflammation 
And that is a way of getting, um, you know, the blood there, lymph there, your immune system there to do what it needs to do. The problem is, is that acute inflammation that doesn't then go away becomes chronic inflammation. And chronic inflammation is behind everything here plus a lot more cardiovascular disease neurological disease autoimmune disease of which rheumatoid arthritis and fibro uh, uh, um, and lupus are uh, in that category cancers fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndromes all stem from chronic inflammation so we have got to get back to the acute inflammation what's triggering the acute inflammation So I want to talk you through something called the pathology of ill health, which is something that we talk about a lot in kinesiology. So I want you to imagine that you've got a splinter in your toe. And so you've got this splinter in your toe and it's just, it's just there. It's really deep in. And so and it hurts. Your toe's a bit swollen and you can't quite walk properly. That's what we call an imbalance. Now, if you're sort of, like, instead of doing a nice heel strike when you're walking, if now you're kind of walking a bit on the side of your foot, this is what we would call a compensation. The body has to compensate for the imbalance. Now, over a period of time, that can actually start to cause functional change in the muscles, in the bone, and we might start to get some symptoms. Now, we might not actually get any symptoms in the ankle. It might be further up in the knee because now the knee is being twisted. And so we start to get these persistent symptoms. Oh, it's chronic knee pain. It's knee pain that just won't go away. And so now it would be when I go to see traditionally a practitioner, I'd, I'd maybe go to see the doctor and say, I've got this knee problem and they'd send me for MRIs or, you know, if they can find, they find out they've got arthritis because we eventually end up with pathological change, i.e. something, you know, maybe there's some um, bony spurs growing in the knee or the arthritis because the knee is not being able, given the opportunity to work properly, the persistent symptoms have become pathological change, but we tend to treat the symptom at this point. And often it's not where we need the treatment and the treatment needed to be removing the splinter right at the beginning. And so in kinesiology particularly, we are passionate about finding, looking to find the splinter. Where's the splinter? And where it is, it often isn't. And so that's where we learn how to be brilliant detectives. And one of the key elements that we use in kinesiology is the muscle organ meridian connection. And so in traditional Chinese medicine and in applied kinesiology, the, this is where this stems from. It is a connection between the organ that is a, uh, has an associated meridian. So in acupuncture, we think about traditional Chinese medicine as, as the acupuncture meridians. But the meridians have names like uh, they're linked to our organs. So uh, the stomach meridian, the spleen meridian, the kidney meridian. But that then means it's actually um, connected energetically to this organ. But the magic is in kinesiology that it's also linked to a muscle. And so we get to explore what's going on in the body because in kinesiology, there are 50 muscles in the body that are connected in this way. So it's fantastic because we can really start to drill down, where's the splinter, where's the splinter? So in, for example, in our neck, chest, wrist, elbow, and shoulder are a lot of the muscles for stomach. So that's often quite surprising. People come with bad necks and we're thinking, mm, something going on with the stomach. Lats, triceps, and traps of spleen. And so um, spleen pancreas, actually. So often we're thinking blood sugars or immune subscapularis, heart, abs and quads, and small intestine, ankles and sacrospinalis is the bladder. So people with a lot of um, bladder issues often have uh, ankle issues. The psoas, a lot of people have problems with the psoas and back pain, that's the kidney. This one is particularly fascinating. The adductors, the piriformis, the glutes are our sex hormones, our reproductive hormones. How many women in menopause end up with bad hips? And that's those adductors and piriformis and glutes not working or firing properly because of the hormone imbalances.
Sartorius, gracilis and lower leg are stress hormones. And we know about this one with the you know, executive stress syndrome when uh, people, uh, people's Achilles heel snaps, so connected to high stress situation. Anterior deltoid is gallbladder, chest, uh, other parts of the chest is liver, um, fasciolata hamstrings, large intestine, and the upper arm, often lung. I've only given you a sort of a vague, a vague breakdown. There's others in there, but just so you can get an idea. And it's absolutely fantastic because you get to be uh, really great at looking at people's posture and going, oh, I don't think that fasciolata is working very well. I wonder how they are eliminating their poo or, oh, I don't think that those glutes are firing. I wonder how their hormones are. So just even knowing the muscle organ meridian connection, you can get so much information about uh, about how someone uh, someone's health is. So this is what we call posture analysis. It's working with the 50 muscles and knowing the connection to the organs. And that allows us to be able to look and see the, the imbalances in the body. It is absolutely incredible. You know, if you're struggling at the gym with triceps, I'm like, hmm, blood sugars. Uh, if, or if, you know, you're just sort of like really struggling with um, sort of upper thigh pain, uh, particularly quad pain my, or knee pain. Um, my first question is always, how, you know, do you get any bloating? How's your digestion? Because of the connection with the small intestine. It is, I literally don't know how practitioners manage without this information. It is illuminating. And so what is kinesiology? I've mentioned it. Well, it was born from a chiropractor called Dr. George Goodhart in the 1960s. And he got frustrated with just fixing the same pain and then they'd cut, go away. And then two weeks later, they'd be back with the same problem. And so he started to realize that where it is, it isn't. So the actually um, a problem in the shoulder could actually be the muscle at the front of the chest not doing its work properly so there could be a compensation or these imbalances that just mean we're not working our, our muscles aren't working properly and he kept on asking questions about the source like where is this coming from where is this com coming from to address the source rather than just do just quick fix it so we can do quick fixing of course we can we can do you know a nice massage we can uh do whatever it is that we want to do we can do some acupuncture we can take the release uh you know for the client and give them relief but we can actually take the time to get to the source of the problem and that means it goes away and the way that we do this is through something called muscle testing. It's also called muscle monitoring. And it's very, very simple. It is essentially a way of creating a communication with the body. And so we take the muscles, some of the 50 that I was talking you through earlier, we would take the muscle and we learn how to contract the muscle in a specific way, asking the client to resist against the pressure that we're applying and we're looking for a muscle response to assess whether the muscle is work working and I always say it's like switching on a light bulb it's like I'm switching on the light bulb and I want to see does the light come on and that's like a way of reading the organ meridian connection because I don't know is it the is it the switch is it the fuse is it the cable or is it the bulb that's not coming on and so I get to be this body detective and so what I mean by the switch, the cable, the few, the bulb is the organ meridian connection. I, I need to find out where this issue is. So I can pinpoint the source of the problem. So kinesiologists think very differently and logically about where the issue is coming from and not just going for symptomatic relief. Although we do get to the symptomatic relief, otherwise, you know, people wouldn't come back. Now, the way this works, it's quite clever uh, and it makes me feel very clever saying it. There is something called the seven factors of the intervertebral foramina. Now, you can see from the diagram, uh, this is to do with your vertebrae uh, or specifically intervertebral foramina means the hole between the vertebrae. So as you can see on the diagram, there is this hole between all of our vertebrae. And in that hole, we have nerve bundles that run through. Now in that nerve bundle, on one end of that nerve bundle, we'll have a muscle. 
So in the diagram, we've got the pectoralis major sternal muscle. It's one of the chest muscles. The other end of that nerve bundle, we've got the liver. So this is where the conversation's happening. It's literally a connection, an electrical connection, going back to that light switch analogy between this, the conversation between the liver and the, the pectoralis. The, the, the PMS, the pectoralis major sternal. So when I'm in communication with the pectoralis major sternal, <clears throat> every kinesiologist will tell you that's not the muscle test of the pectoralis major sternal, it is actually this. Um, then I'm finding out information about that whole electrical circuit. And this requires, you know, the brain to get involved. Um, and uh, there's a whole a load of other things that also get involved. So. That's what we call the seven factors. There are seven factors that basically need to be uh, all, all up and running for the muscle test to show a switching on muscle. So these seven factors, one, the nerve, the nerve itself, is it damaged or impinged? Number two, the neurolymphatic. Now that's a technical kinesiology term. This is to do with the lymph associated for the muscle. Is this lymph congested? Is it flowing properly? Is it cleaning itself? Three is the neurovascular. So this is a kinesiology word for the blood for this muscle. Is it flowing correctly to the muscle? Four, the acupuncture meridian connector. Basically, is the acupuncture meridian, again, clear energy flow in the right way? Five, cerebral spinal fluid. Is there enough spinal alignment or are we structurally out of balance for the cerebral spinal fluid to get the information from the, uh, the, the organ and the uh, nerve bundle to the brain, uh, to the muscle to give us a reading? The nutritional reflex. Is there actually enough nutrition in your body to get this muscle firing or are we depleted? And then number seven is the emotional energy reflex. Is there an emotion that's just blowing your whole circuit? So when these seven factors are in uh, check and all working in alignment, then our muscles fire. And when they're not, our muscles don't fire. And now we can start to be a body detective and we can start to dive in. And this is where we then start to look at how are we going to correct this? What are we going to do? Why are we having these problems? And so what we're looking to do is getting the muscles all switched on and firing using the tools in our toolkit. Now, once we've actually got all of our light bulbs firing, then that means that the circuit underneath and the, the organ underneath is also going to get all of the nourishment that it needs and the energy is going to be flowing. And the body can now start to respond uh, by healing or showing up other issues that it needs dealing with. So in functional kinesiology, we work with what we call the realms. I mentioned them earlier. And so basically this would be how to describe realms would be, these are the areas that conditions are either born out of, uh, and because that could be a source, or it's, so that it's either the cause or it's how we can correct it. So it's one of the two things. So you're going to see as I drop through what I mean by that. The B in uh, the Bs is for biochemical. And so this would be things that would cause a biochemical imbalance would be things like uh, food intolerances, poor diet, chemical toxicity. So skincare, cleaning products, pesticides and pollution, depleted nutrition because we've got a lack of minerals in, like magnesium in our soils right now. Dehydration and poor quality water, big biochemical issue. Medications such as contraception and hormone replacement, alcohol and addictions, um, juice sunlight and vitamin D, lymph congestion that we were just talking about. Um, and one of the ways that we could correct it is then by uncongesting the lymph, sorting out the diet, removing food intolerances, removing chemical toxicity where possible and things like nutritional supplementation. So one of the E's in the B's is electrical. And so our bodies work by electricity, our brain fires, the synapses work by electricity, our muscles fire by electricity. So we need to make sure that all of that happens. And, and the conductor of that is water. So we need to not be dehydrated. 
The electrical would also be the meridian connection, um, muscle function, nervous system, and it can be affected by EMF radiation and devices exposure, which I think we're all pretty guilty of, and light toxicity. So they can be quite electrically imbalanced. And our nervous system is by definition an electrical system. So we wanna make sure that our, our, our nervous systems are looked after. Emotional uh, realm. So uh, this is an inexhaustive list, but anxiety, depression, relationships, social pressure and inequality, low self-esteem, financial and work pressure, addictions, and basically the way that we deal with these, um, uh, we teach kinesiologists to utilize the most amazing emotional techniques to support their clients to move forward. And the last uh, realm in the bees is structural. So this would be poor posture. Um, if you know anything about muscle fibers, it could be the Golgi and the spindle cell involvement that which we drop into in kinesiology training. It could be something called reactive muscles. So uh, muscles firing each other inappropriately. PMJ, which is your jaw. So people who have jaw issues. ICV, which is a digestive thing. And um, stomach issues for hernia. They, we might actually need to do techniques to balance those, which we get to do in kinesiology because it's so much fun. Myofascial release would come in here. Um, it could be caused by sedentary lifestyles and over-exercise or exercising at the wrong time of day or the wrong type of exercise. Also, anything to do with um, sort of postural impingement, so tight clothing, ill-fitting clothing, um, ill-fitting bras, uh, high heels, tight shoes, etc. So they're all of the ways that we end up with imbalances and also some of the ways in our things in our toolkit to correct them. So we also, in our toolkit, is traditional Chinese medicine. <clears throat> so it's, it, we get to study so many exciting things in kinesiology. So we work with the five element model and we look at over and under energies uh, and finding where the issue is, because where it is, it isn't. That's one of our mantras. But what is the hormone connection, Claire? You promised us hormones. Well... So the organs that we work with are often responsible for making our hormones. And so muscle imbalances can be a sign of hormone issues. For example, our lats, spleen, pancreas, I mentioned earlier, blood sugar hormones. So I'm definitely looking there when I'm trying to identify if people's, uh, people have got balanced blood sugars or, and, and support them in creating balanced blood sugars. The teres minor muscle is to do with our thyroid, which is a hugely important organ for or gland for making our uh, hormones. The sartorius gracilis and calves I mentioned were to do with stress. That's because they're linked to our adrenal glands, where we make adrenaline and cortisol and also um, aldosterone, which is to do with blood pressure. Uh, so loads going on there. Our piriformis glutes and ductus, I already mentioned, are our sex hormones, so our estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, DHEA, pregnenolone, really, really, really important hormones to make sure that we feel great and are able to function. And so why is this important? And why, you know, wh why are we so passionate about hormones? Well, this is the triangle of hormonal health, which is our unique clinic model. Um, and basically I want you to imagine a stool, a three-legged stool. And what you want to be able to load bear properly on that stool is you want each of those legs to be of an equal length. And you know, that's how you can sit on your stool and everything's fine. But as soon as I've got an imbalance, let's say um, I'm um, missing breakfast, just drinking a load of coffee, I'm going to have an imbalance in my blood sugars. And then, you know, I've got a load of stress at work. I'm going to have an imbalance in my stress hormones. And as you know, especially if I'm a bit perimenopausal, oh, I've got an imbalance in my sex hormones. And what happens is I've got a wonky stool. And then we're going to end up with symptoms. But the symptoms don't often necessarily show in those places first. What tends to happen very quickly is we will see um, what we call the victims manifesting symptoms. And so that would be the digestive symptom system and the immune system. People getting run down, getting colds a lot, uh, getting uh, cold sores, getting flare up of autoimmune diseases, things like that. 
the digestive system. I mean, classically, irritable bowel syndrome is um, a, a, a huge indicator of hormonal imbalance. So we want to make sure that our triangle of hormonal health is all of our legs are nice and solid. So that's what we are looking to do, particularly in functional kinesiology. That's very, very unique to functional kinesiology. And we need to talk about the vagus nerve because the vagus nerve is, has been so overlooked, I think, for a long time. But it's, it is our protective emotional response. It's the big nerve. You can see it's huge and it actually um, encompasses pretty much all of the organs except for the large intestine. It connects the brain and the digestive system and stress. So it is the gut brain connection. And so we have to work with the vagus nerve to allow our bodies to switch into the parasympathetic nervous system response, which is how we will then reduce stress hormone production, will then balance our hormones, will then stop maybe being in fight or flight, will have more tempered emotional responses. We will uh, be able to digest better because we're producing more uh, digestive enzymes, will produce more hormones, so we'll feel better in with any hormone conditions. So the vagus nerve is really important to learn how to work with. But what does this all mean practically? So, okay, if you were tra training as a kinesiologist um, and someone came in with, for example, a painful neck, well, the first thing you're going to think of is mm, stomach. So what would you be looking at? Well, we're going to work through the Bs. So the food intolerances is biochemical. Kinesiologists are really well known for looking at food intolerances. It's something we do very, very well and we're very good at. And it is absolutely life changing work just eliminating food intolerances can reduce a phenomenal amount of symptoms we're going to be looking at digestion we're going to want to make sure that that stomach is working we're going to be you know looking at all sorts of ways to get that stomach working we're going to be looking at emotions that could be causing the stomach issue so we would refer back to chinese five element theory uh, for the steer on the emotions and then use some really lovely emotional tools and techniques. We're going to look at uh, dehydration, which would be in our electrical realm and meridian balancing, which would be in our electrical realm. We might even be looking at, uh, you know, with stress, we'd be looking at the TMJ connection. So we could be going emotional and structural here. And we'd also be looking at making sure the pelvis is in alignment because as above, so below. So if our jaw, if our neck, sorry, is out of balance and our jaw is out of balance, then we could have an issue with our pelvis. It's just working on that, uh, that constantly painful SI joint isn't going to do it if as above is also below. And we also need to do lymph and muscle work, which then ties in the biochemical and the structural. So that's what you would be doing to actually cor correct the, uh, the painful neck. And eventually as a practitioner, in practitioner kinesiology, uh, functional kinesiology, we would also be looking at supplements to support that digestion, that stomach um, and the any muscle repair that's needed. So let's talk about reactive muscles, because I kind of mentioned them a little bit earlier. Well, if we think about it, overworked muscles can't effectively do their job and other muscles must pick up the slack. And now that is like the main person for the job isn't doing their job, but they're the ones that have been trained for that job. They were made for this job. So if someone else is going to come in and do the job, then we can't expect the job to be done properly. And what happens in the human body is that we can end up with issues and injury. But fixing the injury isn't where the issue is. Remember the pathology of ill health. So we must find the muscle that is overworked, which is what we call the reactor muscle. One reactor muscle can lead to many reactive muscles, and we use muscle testing to find out which ones need the work. There's never any guessing with kinesiology. The body tells us exactly what it needs. So this technique is a game changer for making body work even more effective and can eliminate really stubborn issues while saving your hands and your thumbs, particularly if you're a masseuse. And for PTs, when people just aren't able to get a muscle firing, it can often be this. So understanding how to get that switched on is, you know, essential. And so 
in functional kinesiology, we use what we call a whole health approach. And so this means that we leave no stone unturned in making sure that our clients are, uh, you know, getting on that path to wellness and health. So food intolerance elimination, macronutrient balance, blood sugar stability, stress management and reduction. Those sex hormones need balancing, nutrient density, digestive maximization, organic food where possible vagus nerve support, uh, structural balancing, immune support, medication review, learning about the right time of day to do exercise and what is the right type of exercise, making sure, you know, educating people on nature, sleep management, supplements, emotional resilience training, learning about boundaries, dealing with environmental toxins and self-love practices. So we teach all of this to our practitioners so that they can use this multi-pronged approach with their uh, their clients to get them back, as I said, onto the path of wellness. So what does kinesiology training look like? Well, there's two stages. The first stage is foundational functional kinesiology, and that takes place over six weekends, which also includes an assessment. And we offer that in a variety of locations around the UK. So check the website to find out the closest one to you. On that training, you will learn all of the 50 muscles, the food testing and balancing the body with the bees. You learn the reactive muscles, you learn some really gorgeous emotional techniques. And this gives you everything to become what we call a foundation kinesiologist. So this is fantastic to add to your client, existing client offering if you're already in clinical practice or for your own health or just for your families or if, it's the first step if you want to become a kinesiologist. So when I did my kinesiology training, it was literally because you do quite a lot of educational kinesiology as well, which helps you learn. But it like absolutely transformed my daughter's education with some of her learning challenges. And she was like three at the time. It was an absolute game changer for her. So it's not just about your clients. It's also about you and your family and your friends. So it's gorgeous. So once you've done that process the six weekends once you've done your assessment um, if you pass your assessment uh, which is all incredibly um, uh, supportive open book there's like it's, it's beautiful uh, as a process then you become what's called a proficient kinesiologist and then you can charge money to the public so it's a, a whole standalone course in itself just the foundation course is a huge addition to any practice after that, you can then go on to practitioner. But this is the most important one to start with, because once you've got that, you'll learn, you've learned the language of kinesiology and the rest is just extra bits and pieces. So we want to offer you a free kinesiology introduction course. So please sign up to our free online course, www.functionalkinesiology.co.uk forward slash free hyphen kinesiology hyphen course forward slash and check it out and uh, you learn a few bits and pieces so that you can start to play around with it. And you can learn with us. So we do our menopause coaching, which is an online training, uh, it's a coaching diploma, or a more generalized uh, wellness coaching diploma. Uh, it's the same information, but the menopause has got extra added to give you the lens of menopause for the six, uh, sorry, the five pillars, because we don't include emotion on that, because we also offer the holding space emotional coaching. Or if you don't know if you want to sign up to a whole diploma, you might just want to learn a little bit more about nutrition, like all these food intolerances and a little bit more about well, what is the right food to get people eating. Then we offer Nutrition for Health, which is um, one of the core subjects. Uh, it's like an introduction course. It's very small, uh, but, but you end up with a qualification at the end where you can actually advise on food strategies with your clients. And to look at these, go to functional-wellness.co.uk. And we'd like to offer you a free gift. So <clears throat> go on to functionalwellness.co.uk and you'll see that there's loads of talks and we would and we run talks every month and we would like to offer you um, one of our online classes for free. We cover a wide variety of topics. So go and find one that you're interested in and just use the code freebie. And because it's due in 
it's June 2024. So whenever you're watching this, if, it, if you're watching this in 2024, it's coming soon. If you're watching it after, go check it out. Uh, improvingmenopause.co.uk is our book and we're super excited uh, to be published by Jessica Kingsley Publishers um, but please do uh, join the waiting list uh, it's a whole um, uh, it's like every single thing we know about food strategies uh, uh, hormones diet um, HRT uh, everything lifestyle every single thing that is like being put into this book <laughs> took a year of my life but it's it's we're really proud of it and please stay in touch so facebook instagram is functional wellness courses or functional kinesiology or you can contact me claire snowden darling official and yeah please get stay in touch and i really advise you to get onto the free course and just start learning the magic of kinesiology thanks for your time <laughs>